So here you can see we have a pretty complex document, but now if we come in here, we see the whole outline all the way to the references. In this video, I'm going to share how you can improve your rack systems by extracting more meaningful information from documents. Now, if you don't know who I am, my name is Dave Ebelaar. I'm the founder of Data Lumina. I have a master's in AI and I've been building custom data and AI solutions for the past five years. Now, I make these videos to help you do the same and ultimately get started with freelancing. So let's dive in. All right, so how do you improve the quality of your RAG systems? Now, since you're here, I'm assuming you already understand what RAG is and then you also probably understand or are aware of the challenges when it comes to building RAG pipelines. And those challenges mainly have to do, first of all, with two steps. And the first one is processing the input data. So when we're dealing with unstructured data, PDFs, presentations, Word doc documents, this can be really tricky to get the actual right context in a format that we can then process. If it's, if it's structured data, this is a little bit easier, but one of the main challenges with, for example, company data, there is a lot of PDFs, lots of Word documents, and this is the first problem. Then the second problem is how do we chunk the data? Because we have to put at, we have to chunk, chunk up large documents in order to don't uh, exceed the context windows of the embeddings and the language models that we're using. And for chunking, you have a lot of techniques. So for example, character splitters, recursive character splitters, sentence splitters, but all of these techniques have their own advantages and disadvantages. And in this video, I wanna show you some principles and techniques that we use at Data Lumina to tackle these. So how to improve the, the processing part, processing unstructured data, and then also the chunking part. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go over two examples. So we have a research paper over here and we have the Amazon annual report from 2023. So both of those are very large PDFs, each have their own very unique challenges uh, when it comes to getting this data. So for example, this research paper, what we can already see here is it uses a two column layout, which can already be tricky because a simple PDF reader might read in the data from left to right. Then we also have the Amazon annual report where we can see the text is a little bit more straightforward but then we also in here have some interesting data and let's see we have some tables so those are going to be the two examples that we will cover in this video i will dive into the code in a bit which i will also share with you but before we dive in i do want to put out that for this example we're going to use azure document intelligence which is a really amazing tool that we can access via an api that we use at data lumina for all our ocr problems but I do want to put, point out that you can also use an open source version like Tesseract, which you can look into if you don't want to use Microsoft. Or if you're in the Google or AWS ecosystems, you can use uh, have, take a look at Document AI for Google or Amazon Textract. So these are all OCR tools that <clears throat> will allow you to extract more meaningful information from unstructured data. Of course, the code is going to be around Azure Document Intelligence, but you can follow the same principles and techniques. So we have a way to convert this to Markdown and then split via headers. And that is really the, the, at the core of what makes this uh, approach really powerful. So that's what I want to show you. So I just wanted to, to put that out. Um, and also, if you want to follow along with Azure Document Intelligence, in a bit, I will show you how you can set this up. It literally takes two minutes and it's one cent per page on average to analyze. So it's really cheap. Um, it's way cheaper than uh, working with language models. So I just want to put that out. So we're all on the same page on what we're going to dive into. And now let's dive into the actual code and show you some examples. All right, so here we are inside VS Code and here we have a document intelligence surface that I created. I will make this one available for you via a GitHub gist but it's a simple wrapper around the document intelligence API. And the only thing that's required is a document intelligence key and an endpoint. I will show you in a bit how to do that if you, if you want to follow along. And there are some simple uh, functions in here. We have a main function to do the analysis. Then we have some internal functions to submit the analysis and get the results. So let's have a look at what that actually looked like. So. Let's fire up the interactive session over here. We initialize the client. And now we're first going to look at the Amazon annual report. So we have a URL in here. So this works either with 
URLs or with base64 encoded documents. So for now, we're going to use the URL and I'm going to run this. So now we're going to send this to the Azure Document Intelligence API and we wait for it to finish. So that's what is going on behind the scenes right now. We can also get an idea of the, the speed. So it usually takes a couple of seconds and we can now see that it's completed. So let's have a look at what we have over here. We have an analysis results, which I'm going to show uh, here right now. And this is going to be a very big file or it's a dictionary actually. And it has lots of information. So let's have a look at what's in here. So first we can have a look at the keys of the top level dictionary. So we have a status, uh, created time, last updated and the analyze results. Okay, so we have some metadata. So let's go one level deeper and look at the analyze results. So if we look at the keys in here, let me zoom in a little bit for you. We can see that what we have, we have API version, etc. but also we have the content, pages, tables, paragraphs, and now this is where it gets interesting. So what we can now do, we can have a look at the content. And this is the actual content that was taken from the document. And what you can see over here is that this is in a very nice and neat structure that follows Markdown. So you can see we have the Markdown headers here as well. And what you will see in a bit, this is really what I found is the key to improve REC systems. Now that we have this data in a structured format, we can later create a custom function to extract this and keep the content of certain sections within its own context. So this is really great, but we can also have a look at the tables. So let's see all the tables that are in here. And this is information that can be parsed into, for example, a pandas data frame. And one, uh, let's, let's look at one more thing to also show you how good this actually uh, works. So this is the, uh, the Amazon file and we can have a look in here. Let's go to the text editor and I know that there is a board of directors. Yes, so here we have some tables. So we have the board of directors. So look, this is a perfectly formatted markdown table that we can now use within our context and make available to language models. And as we know, language models respond really well to markdown structures. So this works really well. And now to have a look at where we were actually getting this from, so board of directors, here you can see this was the table that we extracted. And now we have all of that information in here. All right, so I'm going a bit fast here, but this is on purpose just to show you what's possible here. Like I said, I will share this gist with you so you can have a look at what's going on behind the scenes. But I want to point out a couple of things. So one really powerful uh, parameter is to set the output content format to markdown. So this really what's going to make this system work. So I'm not sure how this works with, with Google or AWS, but Microsoft allows you to do this. Then the second thing is the model that we're using. So document intelligence has various models. So we have the read model, we have the layout model, and I really like the layout model because you can see in here, it can deal with unstructured data and PDFs with text in ways that are pretty tricky to process if you just use a simple, simple processor. And through this, we can really extract those uh, meaningful paragraphs and headers and even image captions. But the cool thing is there are many more models that you might want to try out. So there's also a dedicated model for processing invoices, which can be really cool if you're working on a problem with, with that. We have receipts, we have identity cards, we have US uh, mortgage forms. So there are lots of there are lots of models that you can already pick from. All right, so now you know how you can extract Markdown from documents like PDFs, Word files, presentations. So this is really going to improve step one of your RAG system, extracting information from the documents. Now let's look into step two. That is the chunking and then the factorization. And I'm again going to show you an example here, but you should really adjust this to your specific setup. So this is going to be different depending on your use case, on the type of factor database that you use. But what I wanna show you here, this is a file called pdfingester.py. And if I scroll down to the bottom here, I have the same results here again. So the document intelligence 
class, the surface, is integrated in here. So we, you can see we have an ingest function over here, and there we get the analyzed results. And then from there, we extract the data using the content that is in there. But one additional thing that we do is I've created a markdown splitter over here, which I will, let me show you, I will share it with you. So if you want to like copy this, you can do. So this is the extract data. So it takes the analyze results content as input, and then it loops over the things line by line and splits by a hashtag. So if you want to copy this, you can do so. But let's now look at the results that come out of here. Now, if I look at Amazon results, you can see that we now have PDF sections where every section has a name. And then also we have the content. Now, this is going to be really exciting. Let me actually show you the research paper results. So here we can see the research paper. And let's quickly come back to what is it, what we were dealing with. So here you can see we have a pretty complex document, pretty tricky. But now if we come in here, we see the whole outline from the front matter, the introduction, all the way to the references. And now it's not 100% perfect. So for example, I noticed with this particular example that in section two overview of RAG, we go from A, B to D. So we're missing C. But... The interesting thing is with this approach, C is still in section B. So the content is still there, it just missed the header. So there was no hashtag to split on. But if you understand reg and uh, understand chunking, you could already probably see why this is a really interesting approach because now every chunk is a section. And we assume that a section typically has most of the content related to that section. So we really counter the problem here of splitting up based on certain characters or certain sentence, sentence limits and having a, a, uh, an alinea or a paragraph, whatever, split up into two or three chunks. And now let's have a look at those results. So what we're actually putting into the factor database. So let's take the paper results and get the first PDF section. You can see we now have a section, which is the front matter. And then we can also get the content and let's print that for reference in here. You can see we have the title in here, we have all the authors, and then we have the abstract going into this. So we have perfectly isolated the first like front matter before getting into the introduction. And something that I'm playing with right now, and this is really going to depend on your use case, I have a simple generate metadata function in here as well, where if we're, for example, right now, look at the metadata, we can also see that in there we have a title. Let me actually dump this Pydentic model for you to have a look at this. Can we do it? I think if we don't print it. Yes, now you can see it. So here you can see we have a title. We've also extracted the authors. We have a date, date processed. So with this information, this is just this is another tip to improve rack systems to extract uh, to extract metadata from those particular sections. And you can see we also have the uh, also the page number is in here. So that is something else that uh, we add in here. So we have the we have the result. And then we also have the page numbers. So you can see this is on page number one. So that can also be used for referencing back to the original documents. And now again, I understand that I might be going a little fast here going over all of this, but the main thing that I wanna show to you is this, this document intelligence API and trigger you to think about how you could potentially uh, include this in your workflows, whether that's through Microsoft, AWS, or, or through Google. And I'm just showing you an example of how I use it to also extract that metadata and the page numbers. And now finally, let's have a look at how this comes together in a simple factor search. So let's fire this up and look at the Amazon collection and ask who are in the 2023 board of directors. So we have the question over here. Let's get the context. So we'll run the similarity search. And here we can see the scored points. And we have the content in here. But then we also, what we also have is we also have the title. We have the page numbers. We have the section. So we have all of the information that we need next to just the content. And that's going to be really helpful if we now put this into a synthesizer to get the response, and this is just the final step of RAG, so first retrieving the KS3 top uh, uh, results from the vector database, 
sending it to, uh, in this case, OpenAI with the question. So we have the question, who are the board of directors and the response. And then we can see that it has the information in here and we have the perfect table as outlined here in the PDF, which usually can be tricky to extract. And now if you also wanna use Azure Document Intelligence to follow along with the exact code snippet that I shared with you, what you should do is you should sign up for Azure if you don't already have one. You can create a free account. Usually you get also get free bonus credits in the beginning, so it's completely free to get started. Then you should create a resource group and in there create a Document Intelligence resource. You should be able to figure out how to do this. Otherwise, ask ChatGPT. It's pretty straightforward. Once you have the resource active in your account, what you should then do, it should look like this. You can go to keys and endpoints and you should copy the key and the endpoint from your Azure Document Intelligence resource. And this is what you would then put in here. So I use a Pydentic settings file to load the key in the endpoint, but you can have a look here behind the scenes. We just load the environment variables that are stored in a .env file. This is just a nice way to structure it and also put some uh, validation in place. So those are that's literally all you need to do this. So create an Azure account, set up the resource group and then the resource and then copy the key in the endpoint. All right, and that's it for this video. And now, by the way, if you're a developer and you want to get started with freelancing, but you struggle to find clients, then you might want to check out the first link in the description. It's a video of me going over how my company can potentially help you with this. Now, in all transparency, it's a funnel designed to get leads for my company. So please keep that in mind. You don't have to click it, of course. But if you consider freelancing, you might want to check it out. And now, if you found this video helpful, please leave a like and also consider subscribing. And now that you know how you can improve your rack systems, the next video you might want to check out is this one, where I go over some strategies and techniques to improve LLM systems in general. This goes really well with what we've just learned in this video and will overall really improve the quality of your LLM applications.